trend that seems to be coming through at this early on in your career is your ability to be able to recognize um, people that, um, you know, are impactful people, I guess, that are going to hook you up with, you know, I guess you call it networking people to, you know, they're going to get you in a foot in the door somewhere. Is that something that just came intuitively? I, I think I'm going to call Ben or I'm going to mm. call so and so's got a contact at North Melbourne and, and see where it goes. Or did someone, did a mentor help you out in that space? Um, yeah, take us through sort of your mindset in, in making those calls. Yeah, I think, honestly, university gave me a pretty good, um, I suppose, grounding for that, just in terms of uh, I had uh, Dr. George Elias. Um, I had, uh, I remember having Con Harushamalis um, and who else? Um, Dr. David Butterfin even come in um, to give some presentations uh, over time and obviously had them for my advanced resistance training courses. Um, but I genuinely think like as a natural part of, part of my personality as well, maybe I get it from my mum a little bit, but just getting out of my comfort zone. And I think that's something you need to really do early on in your career is knowing that you, you don't know everything. And to be honest, I don't today. And, mm. um, and who is in your network and, and how can obviously those people around you um, obviously support the questions that you're trying to ask. Um, yeah. which may potentially, from a um, work perspective, lead to an opportunity. With umpires before, what what does the schedule look like for them, you know, from a periodization point of view? Is it follow a similar sort of um, load, I imagine, with with AFL footballs in the sense that they have a pre-season, building them up and then getting them ready for, for games? Um, mm-hmm. But, yeah, what does what is, what is your role look like and how does that work with, with the umpires? I imagine it would have to be fairly remote sometimes as well. Yeah, it was. Um, I, I did get to do a bit of travel around to each of the states as a part of the role as well, um, So, which was an amazing opportunity, but just to see like how decentralised some of the, the umpires are. And I suppose particularly with the Victorian set up, um, you do have majority of the umpires that are um, either, I suppose, move into state and, and come mm. to that particular setting because it is a real hub for it. Um, but... Uh, I just had such an appreciation for just how much running um, that an athlete can handle, I think, um, was was really my key takeaways um, at at the time. Um, To see these guys running five, six days a week on top of obviously getting through the the (laughs) matches um, as well in some cases because, like, your your boundary umpires can sometimes be doubling up on on a weekend. So if they yeah. are on a Thursday night and they're going potentially again on a Sunday um, back then. They love the sport they play, but don't necessarily love the gym. So, and you mentioned education. What were some successful sort of methods that you've used in the past um, to, uh, I guess, with these umpires in this, in this scenario to, um, yeah, to get buy-in from the guys that don't love the gym? Yeah, um, I think we, back then, we tried to lean on like just some of the endurance research, um, to be honest, just to try and establish, um, I'd started my master's through Edith Cowan um, University. And Mm -hmm. I remember looking at a lot of the um, uh, endurance training, uh, I suppose, the strength training for endurance endurance training back then, Mm -hmm. Um, but also leaning on, obviously, Paul Turk um, at the time with regards to, like, what the AFL guys were were doing as a consultant. I think that's the the beauty about having a consultant come in and and providing a second set of eyes um, to educate the group, um, but also work with us as practitioners. Um, Yeah. So... That definitely, um, like looking at just the role of strength training um, in terms of running economy and running efficiency and, and so forth, that uh, that, that really, um, once we establish some buy-in with simple exercises, I'm talking so simple, like uh, a basic body weight squat, like an inline lunge, um, uh, an RDL, um, a, a calf rise, like for under time under tension, like, keep it so simple or body weight and then eventually we'll start to, to add some load. What were some of your favourite acceleration drills? You mentioned, you know, speed out of the blocks. What were some drills that I guess pop up to mind that, that athletes could start practising in their warm-ups or in their, their training sessions to improve that area? Yeah, I think, yeah, like just going really basic, like in a 1v1 contested situation, like literally just grappling, I suppose, with your opponent and then being able to someone to cue you to be able to, to get out of blocks. 
Mm -hmm. um, just working on that first one to three steps um, mm -hmm. is, is really critical. Um, but then I suppose um, what I think is really valuable and what we tried to do is even further was just filming. Um, so from side on, from posterior, um, actually just have a look at how you're extending from the hip, knee and ankle, um, and literally get someone to be able to have a look at that. And that's where I think like three-point starts are really good or standing starts or a rolling start variation. For those listening in that might be presenting um, for their first job or, or a new job or, or, um, it, or it could be an assignment, whatever it might be, where there's a bit on it. Um, what are some of your key focuses are when you're putting a presentation together um, like this one? Yeah, um, it's just knowing your room and knowing your audience. Like there's no doubt about it. Um, thankfully, I have had this opportunity once before um, to, to present to this uh, coaching group, um, which was amazing earlier on in the year. Um, but uh, I genuinely think like keeping it as, as simple as you possibly can, but go into some detail when you're required to, um, because they're going to uh, want to hear rationale as to mm -hmm. how you actually got there. And I think that's the that's really the the best piece about having like objective data to be able to walk into that conversation. Um, I still think there is elements of uh, interpretation in it. Uh, mm -hmm. But the more you can understand their environment, uh, and that's something so simple as like asking questions to them and, yeah. and trying to create it exactly what we're doing at the moment, like trying to create it more of a discussion based around, um, based around performance and, and how you're actually trying to help them.